Hello, everyone. <laughs> We're gathered here today to discuss a picture book this time. Um, I'm super excited about this on one hand and on the other hand, I'm like, how do you, how do you even talk about a picture book within the context of thinking about, um, thinking about the idea of like where black Americans fit into our national landscape, right? Um, so the book that we're here to discuss today is The Other Side by Jacqueline Woodson. Uh, it's a super, you know, as picture books tend to be, super quick read. Um, but one thing that I found myself thinking about was like, I wonder when this was written, right? Like you look at this book and it's, it's not, you could tell that it's not super old, um, but you're also like, oh, wow, we're reading a book about segregation. When was this written? And I, um, I just looked it up because I was like, what are you going to talk about when you start talking about this picture book? <laughs> and it looks like this book was, um, was released in 2000. Right. So like as as we think about this book, what does it mean to read a book about uh, a book for children that talks about um, a cross racial um, friendship within the context of segregation in 2020? What does it mean to read this book right now? Any thoughts? <laughs> oh, yeah. I I have some thoughts for sure. I'm, I've got to confess the reason I am here today is because I too am really curious to see where this discussion goes. I mean, we've talked about um, 500 plus page books. We've talked about 200 book plus page books, but not a 20 page, if, if that book. Um, so uh, so yeah, um, I don't know also, Sherlania, if you want to do names and stuff, but I'm Lauren. Well, and you and you called my name, so we know that I'm Sherlania now. So we might. Around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lucy. I'm Elizabeth. Hi. Um, and I, I just wanted to say, like, I um, I read there is an author's note in the version of the book that I uh, read, and um, you know, in she she takes the time. Uh, Jacqueline Woodson takes the time to say in it, like, wow, I just like. I needed to write this story. I needed to like focus on these characters um, and tell it kind of a tale of hope. Um, and uh, you know, she she gives like one paragraph break to just that line. I needed that hope. Um, and she wonders at the end of this author's note what it will mean. Like this story will mean to people twenty years from now. So here we are, <laughs> twenty years from now. Um, and so I guess that hit me just like. I read that and I was like, okay, yeah, uh, this is, this is really interesting, uh, that she's talking to us so pointedly and like, here we are at the 20 year mark. Um, what else did I want to say off the bat? Does that, I, I want to pause and let other people react first too. Yeah, I, uh, I have the, 10th anniversary edition here as well, which I think probably is the same one, Lauren, with the author's note. Um, and this is something I thought about as I was reading too, but I think it is, um, so first of all, this book is fictional. Um, not that this scenario could not have happened, but at least it's a, it's a fictional um, you know, picture book. And I think it's really rare um, that um, we have a, fictional portrayal of the very young kids that can express um, as much as this book does and have something that, um, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? You know, it's a simple book, like we said, about two young girls, you know, children. Um, and it doesn't, it never really come, it's just a story basically. And it's just kind of interesting to um, read a fictional account that's very simple of the two young kids, but I realize what that means in the broader context is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. And I think that that's where um, it allows us to, to have a conversation about it or have um, other folks have a conversation about it because um, it doesn't come out and tell you exactly what it's saying, but it's, you know, it's, 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 it, it offers opportunities for conversation without um, 
coming right out and saying, this is what you're going to talk about right now, I guess is what I'm trying to say, which I said a little bit poorly, but <laughs> kind of. Yeah. No, but I totally, I, I agree with what you're saying. And I think the thing is um, when you have a, a book from the point of view of children, it's like they notice different things than adults and things seem different to them in their, like just in their visual scope, the size of things. Um, and I was thinking about this book too and the length of it. And it struck me that like, if you're writing a story that's this short, I mean, even if it's for children, your words really matter. Every single word matters. So you notice like right away, the main character Clover says the fence seemed bigger. And it's like, so I'm thinking, does it seem bigger because she's just noticing it? Cause she's, a, you know, so it's, it's interesting to put that child's point of view in there and say like, what are they noticing? And did the fence actually, was it grow it? I mean, did it get added on to, was it new? You know, that's just so, it's so it's really interesting. Um, I think what you're saying, Elizabeth, to like put those things in there, but not have them be overt because they're being um, noticed by children. Yeah, I, you mentioned the fence, Lucy, and I just think like, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if such fences ever existed, or it's interesting to think about the child's point of view and whether this fence is like, appears more massive to the child's frame than an adult's. But I mean, if you look at these pictures and they're just super beautiful, but like that fence is massive. It's a huge fence. And I, I guess like, I mean, it just made me feel like, wow, like these, this, this is a real barrier. It's, it's a per, it's a porous barrier, but it's, it is, it's a big deal. Like this is a big visual event in the book as this like place of things happening. Um, and, and, and I guess like, I wanted to say that like, this book has a lot of like silences in it, not a lot of words, you know? And uh, so every word matters, like you say, Lucy, but like the, silences really matter like the just like the lack of words and like the invitation to just look and inside the images and just be in this world I think is uh is one of the reasons why I really liked this book so what for for me looking at this book it made me think about um it made me think a little bit about the way that that I read picture books, right? You know, cause like, to, like um, for many years, I wasn't really, you know, reading them much. Like when I was in library school, like I took this children's literature class and I read a bunch of them then. Um, and, uh, you know, and now I'm like entering the phase of life again, where I will be like curating the books that a, a you know, young person is reading. And it just made me think about the way that I tend to read them, which is not very deeply. But like, when I look at a book that I have to think about, um, thinking about and engaging with, with other people who read the book, it made me, it made me just consider the book differently, right? Like in this book, I'm looking at all of the things that are communicated through the photos, you know, not photos, through the illustrations um, and all the things that are communicated by the silences, which then made me think about like, wait a minute, as you're curated, as you are the curator in the beginning for your kids' um, books, like what are all those silences and what are all those images communicating, right? Because we saw this fully, we, like I felt like this book really put us very um, evocatively in this, world what are the other worlds that we invite our children into right and then like when we're trying to and, and it made me think about like um helping people find books for their kids at the library right when people are like hey i'm looking for a book that like reflects my family and often that's difficult depending on what their family looks like right and so like what does it mean then to like paint these vivid worlds full of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books where, um, where, you know, you just get a smattering of representation of different types of things, you know, or like when I was looking at this book and reading it, like I liked the book, um, but like, I felt like, would I, would I like own this book? Right. Cause it's like, 
And I don't know, like maybe later when, when we're, when we're past the eating of book age, um, I might look at it differently, but like, uh, you know, like how many books am I going to be able to bring into my house that have like a mixed race family, like my kid has, and like, is this the book that I want to bring in and then make him feel like, wait a minute, it was a big deal for these people to like cross this line, but like what's happening in my house. Right. But that's probably um, this is probably a very like adult, like I'll cross that bridge when I come to it way of, of looking at it. But I did think about that when I was reading this book. So, so you were thinking about like who, like what age, first of all, would it, would it be something that would work with you, for you and you know, your family or your child? And you were also, were you, were you also kind of thinking about like, what, what age is this really, who is this for? Cause it, there's like com some complexity here. Thinking about both. Like, I think that kids handle complexity fine. You know what okay. I mean? I don't, mm -hmm. I like, like as a, you know, from that point of view, I'm kind of like my, my philosophy personally as a parent usually has been like once, once it gets to the point where they're picking up their books and stuff, I'm like, read what you want. Just know that I might read what you're reading too. So make your, make, decisions accordingly right like I don't feel like it's not for me to tell somebody what they want to read like we've all as children read books mm -hmm. or tried to read books that you're like why did somebody give this do they hate me like <laughs> I don't want to be that be that force but you know I, I probably wouldn't I, I probably wouldn't select this book right but I think this book is super I think it's a good book but like I also like, I don't know, like, and maybe it's just like, I don't want to have like early conversations about segregation in my mixed race family. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I feel like young kids, I also have been like a parent who's like, you know what? The crappy stuff is going to come. Like you're like, the, like there's gonna, especially if your kid's like a kid of color, like somebody's going to say something to the kid and then they're going to bring, bring the corresponding um, t telling of the story or questions home. And I kind of feel like, you know what, I want you to have as long of a life as you can without even having to think about that. And then like when it comes to your doorstep, we'll deal with it then. And maybe that's really what I'm thinking in. And now, now that you poked me, Lauren, I understand <laughs> what that response what my response to that book is, right? Because it's like, well, you know, like it, uh, like your kid only has like a very small envelope of like innocence when it comes to the way that race is going to function on their life. Um, and I'm like, take the whole envelope, take every corner, take the adhesive, explore the whole innocent envelope before it's ripped away from you, I guess, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah well i mean i wonder like as far i'm not very well versed i haven't read a lot of picture books that explore the topic of a cross uh cross racial friendship or really segregation like uh maybe others have more opinions there but i mean this is the first one that i've ever read and as far as it went i thought um there's I love the way this story was told. I just, uh, I think like the way of the friendship unfolds between this white girl and this black girl feels real, really true to life to me, feels authentic. Um, I love the illustrations. I love the silences, like I said before. And I think also what I meant also there is I love the body language. There's a lot of like moments in this book that you get to see and it invites you to sort of feel like a kid again, if you're somebody as old as I am, and maybe for to a kid, it just like makes sense. Like I see, you know, I see the mom's like legs and I'm at the child's uh, head view of um, people walking past each other on the street. And so I can imagine myself as a kid being like, yep, that's what it's like, you know? <laughs> and, um, and I can also imagine the kind of dialogue that um, it, it, it comes into play in this story as being pretty authentic too, to the ears of a kid, you know, they, the kind of like, you know, the, the mom um, 
Clover's mom telling her, nope, you can't go outside and play in the rain. I have, I bought you these toys so you could just stay inside and keep dry. You know, like, or the don't, don't stare. That's not polite. You know, these sort of like, but then crucially there's like, um, you get to feel a little bit of like Clover's mom's watching, clearly observing this friendship unfold. And she's not going to yank her kid away from it, which is interesting to me. Like this, the, the, her mom allows this, uh, what do you want to call it? Like liminal zone to exist for these two girls of different races. And I think she kind of allows maybe like speaking to what you were just saying, Shervanya, she, perhaps Clover's mom doing that is allowing her child to hold onto that envelope and explore that little envelope just a little bit more before you know um innocence is lost or complex more complexity is introduced into her life <clears throat> it's just my thought i i think that the mom like very well knew um i i for to me when i saw that i was like okay you know like they're yeah they you know there's like um a gray area i think right like when you look at, I, I feel like in segregated communities, there's always a gray area, right? Like it's not true often that like there's no contact across groups, right? Like who is doing certain types of work, you know, um, and things like that. So I think that, um, but with that in mind, I think that the mom is very aware of where the like crisp border is. And I think that the mom was also making sure that there was not a situation created where that, where the real border is breached, right? Um, cause I definitely think it would have been a real problem if, if it had the potential to be a real problem, if Clover was the one, you know, sitting on the fence, making the overtures across the fence. Like I, there's a definitely a difference I think there. And I think that when we see mom, we see that mom is like, oh, I'm going to have my eyes on every single thing. Right. Or like parents do this all the time. Right. Like where your, your kid makes a friend with somebody that you're like, I don't know if I like that kid. I don't know if I like that kid's family. I don't know if I like anything about that kid. That kid's coming over here to play because I will watch every single thing. And then you're just lingering in the doorway the whole, whole time, like listening to every single thing to like, let your kid you know, have an experience, but also you're watching it. Like mom listened to every single word that transpired between those girls and mom watched every single thing. Mom wasn't hanging laundry that whole time. Mom was listening, I think, um, in, in some of that. Uh, that's what I saw anyway, um, or that's what feelings came up for me when I saw mom watching, right? And then I think the, um, you know, you bring up the scene where mom is like, um, excuse me about like playing outside like that. Like the first thing I thought was like, well, of course she can't, she's not, she's not going to be able to go out there and get her hair wet because like, that's a whole different situation for black hair than it is for other hair. So it's like, mm. but like moms might, might not tell her like, I just combed your hair and we are not right but the other thing that i saw in that scene was like mom we see that mom has provided very well for clover right like we see that she's like i have provided things for you to do you are not in need of things to do and then we see all this stuff that she's got and then it made me wonder about like the socioeconomic realities of the situation right because like if you if you're living on two sides of a um segregation situation like what what was the status socio like what you know what what were the relative statuses of the families inside of their own racial communities right um because like i don't think that the house next to the black neighborhood is the choice house for the mm -hmm. segregated um white people and i don't i don't know what it means in in this con in this context like is that the house you want or you're like oh man like <laughs> too bad I gotta like have this house where I'm watching all the time, right? Um, and then the other thing like that Fence made me think about is like how both, because both of the girls seem to um, spend a lot of time gazing back there, right? Like, and you know how like childhood feels like it's just like rolling fields of endless time. Um, and this Fence felt like enforced loneliness to me at some points. And that to me felt like it was in some ways like it, just the notion of the enforced loneliness, loneliness made me think about the way that like 
um, social rules can function that way in, in our lives now, right? Like if you're not, if you're not doing the thing that you might otherwise have done, if the rules were different, like what did that take away from you, right? And we see that both of these girls would have wanted to have each other's companionship where they ultimately got in the book, but. I, th I think it's interesting because it, on the surface, in some ways, I think this could be considered kind of a simple story if you don't really think about it too much, but listening to all of you too, and just kind of thinking about all the further questions you can ask, I think that it actually could be a more useful tool than even I thought about when you're talking to kids about what segregation means or something like that. Like I was thinking, um, you know, a good, a interesting question is when Clover starts talking to Annie, the other black girls that she usually spends time with, they don't want anything to do with that. And thinking about, well, why might that be? What have they experienced that, you know, she hasn't yet, or why are they not interested in talking to the girl, you know, um, thinking also about how, she, you know, there's always a ton of friends that she's playing with, whereas the white girl across the fence is always alone. Why might that be? You know, what is there something that's, you know, to think about there? And, you know, thinking about just even, um, you know, the mom watching and stuff. And I don't know that the girl picks up then the fact that her mom is listening and watching, but of course she is. And why, you know, because she knows she wants to make sure that you know, her child is safe and she knows the kind of things that might happen and she wants to protect her child, you know? And I think those are all things that are conveyed very subtly in the book that are interesting to delve deeper into and that you could bring up to a child, not a young, young child, but a child and that would be accessible for them to kind of consider when, um, when reading the book that would go beyond just, well, why do you think that this story happened kind of yeah i think to add to that it's interesting um I, I, like another question you could add to that is when they do finally end up being on top of the fence and then clover's friends come it's it's just clover's friends and clover and annie like there's one white girl among other black girls and that doesn't i mean maybe that's just where the story ends but i don't i don't think so like we don't see the other side Annie doesn't have friends that are playing with her but that's also um I just think it's interesting that that's the way that that happens that's the viewpoint that we see and um yeah that it's just um just Annie there but nobody else on Annie's side of the fence has taken any steps towards the fence Yeah, I wonder if um, I wonder if Annie's, you know, like, yeah, like there are a lot of questions. I wonder if Annie's friends are even allowed to come over, right? Like if, if she if she lives in that house, is like right next to that fence, you know, maybe maybe she maybe her friends just can't come over, right? You know, and again, parents do that all the time. Like there's that one house that you're like, my kid is never going over there because of whatever, you know? Yeah, um, and that definitely could could be a factor in this world um one thing that struck me in looking at this book was um was that they were um just the idea of like safety being given as a reason for the kids to stay um to, to stay away from the fence um and it just you know that's a thing that made me wonder like how that idea functions for people currently like in a lot of situations right like if you are if you um one two it made me think about um you know i i keep saying this like have, doing all this reading and viewing back to back it makes me like one thing makes me think about the other but there's a scene in the um king in the wilderness um movie where there's this little boy little white boy um playing dixie i think mm -hmm. on his clarinet and he is looking at these um, 
at these black people who are marching, I think, but he is like, he looks like he's nine or something like a little boy. Um, and he just has such anger toward the presence of these other people. And so like reading a book like this, makes me really, he stood out to me in that movie just because it's like, whoa, yikes, that kid scares me a little. Um, but, uh, it just made me think about like the layered ways that we learn the our, the social rules that apply to us, right? And so like, does it start with safety? You know, like is she, who is Annie gonna be at the end, right? Like, is she gonna be a person who like befriends folks or is she not? Is she gonna be like, um, like if we think about the uh, the souls of black folk and we had that that story about the two Johns, right? Like there are these, kids these two boys who like lived within the context of their segregated um scenes they leave and then like the the white john was like not about you know the other the black john's role changing at all right it's like i don't know it's like who we know that woodson said that she wrote this as a story of hope right but like, if we look at like how people are sometimes, it's like, oh, I hope Annie makes it through. I hope Annie doesn't like become burdened with like all of these roles that she's got to wear moving forward. Well, and I think it is hard too, because in many ways it, it is a hopeful story. And I think we need those. And I, Woodson wanted to write that. And, but, you know, also, we know the realities of the world today, you know, and we don't really know. I mean, for all we know, Annie's dad saw her talking to Clover and Clover's friends. And then like she went home and he was furious and she, they never, he didn't want her to ever like go over there again or something, you know, like that is a reality that um, could happen, which we don't want to think about because that's not the point of the story, but we know what the world is like and we know the kind of things that happen. And I just think that, um, you know, we don't know what happens at, after the end of the book at all. And we don't know um, how the girls grow up or, or, you know, what they experience yeah, as, they, as, they, as they grow up. Who would you recommend this book to? I'm curious. Like having, having like done this deep read of this book, like what, what situation do you imagine that you're going to be asked to be like, you know what, this is just the book. I've got just the book for you. Well, I think if you want That's kind of a weird yeah. way to think about a book and I understand yeah. if the answer is like, we don't think about books like that. So stop. Well, no, but I think I was thinking about when you were talking about the type of books you're thinking about bringing into your house now and, um, like, I think that this would be a good book to tell an adult to read with a child uh, if they wanted to like ask and try to answer some of those bigger questions. Or even if like, if you're reading it to a group of kids, probably an older group of kids, then I think, you know, it might seem like based on the number of words in the pictures. I just think if it's little kids, they're gonna, the illustrations are really beautiful. But honestly, like story-wise for little kids, they might just be like, oh, okay, you know, they, I, I don't know. So um, I think that I would probably give it to older kids or say to tell adults that this is a good book for trying to ask and maybe answer some questions about why groups of people are divided. I think that's well put. I would agree with that, um, Lucy. And yeah, I, I think that um, I don't see this kind of book as like a book to introduce as like l the first thing to broach the subject. Cause I, I, I too would, I don't know. I, I think that there is something to this idea of like, let's, um, allow kids to come to adults with that question with, with questions about like, well, what is, I heard this word, like what, somebody said this was racist. What's racism mean? Like what's racist? And I think that there, I have encountered other books that are for older kids that are kind of explicitly about what is this? 
here's the concept and let's put other words to this and put provisional definitions to this. Um, one that I'm thinking of is called Not My Idea by Anastasia Higginbottom. It's a, it's a book for older kids about whiteness specifically. It's like a white kid asking the question, like what's racism? Um, and uh, I felt like that book really puts a whole lot more words than this picture book does, you know, to around the concept. And I think that a book, the advantage of a book like this one, uh, the other side is that it very much feels like, okay, let, let's like, let's look back in time to a specific time in American history. This is emblematic of a particular period in, you know, the Jim Crow South probably like, um, that we can really physically feel like this, or we can ask all those other questions. Because I think this book raises more questions and kind of, yes, thankfully, like delivers they like, you know, a, a, a fulfilling enough ending that like you can just read it and then it asks, it, it raises some questions though that you could then explore. Um, and some of which we've already begun talking about, like, would this have worked if there was a black girl on the fence at first? Probably not. No, this would not be told like that. There's a reason why there's this, the, a certain number of black girls and a certain number of just one white girl, you know. What were you guys hoping that we would talk about or what questions did this book raise for you that you're interested in unpacking more? If any. Well, yeah. I'm kind of like you. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Right. I mean, I would just say that like, I'm kind of like you, Shalon, you know, I've been, I've been reading a little bit of this. I've been reading this history. I've been reading this uh, book uh, on the Black Lives Matter discussion list. And I don't know. I just like, I, I feel like there's a lot of ideas in here that resonate with all those other books. And it's one other way to um, look at this wide ranging reality in America. And uh, I guess what I wanted to talk about or wanted to see where this was, I'm, I was curious. I had no, I, I didn't have an agenda coming into this meeting. <laughs> I just thought like, wow, we're going to talk for some amount of time on about a picture book. Um, but um, something you talked about that you brought up about the king in the wilderness is something that occurred to me too, is this idea of like children getting social cues and enough and the girls, maybe I also wanted to talk about um, in this story, um, Clover's friends, Sandra and the other girls who seem to like elizabeth was mentioning earlier there seems to be like these girls kind of know that like nah -uh. don't talk to that white girl no like it's not happening no you can't play is what clover's friend sandra says to um what's the white girl's name again annie 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 yeah and uh and so clover has this moment of being like i'm not sure if i would have said no, you can't play with us. Maybe I would have, but maybe also I wouldn't have. Uh, and so I'm interested in kind of looking at that a little bit. It's funny, because like that scene, I was like, that just feels like regular mean girl behavior to me. And it actually made me think of a thing that happened at, um, I don't even know. If, well, I won't, I'm not identifying anybody, but it makes me think about something that happened at an event that I had once where um, there was like this nail painting event. And uh, I had all this nail. I was like, oh, it's going to be so fun for people like to paint their nails to just choose from all these colors. Like you wouldn't be able to do at home. Like normally, like if you're a kid kid, you don't have like blue and yellow and stuff. I was like, this is going to be great. Like one, I did not anticipate that I was going to make the whole branch smell terrible. Um, that was... <laughs> that's what I that's the one thing I should have anticipated up front but like there was there I will never forget this there was this light blue nail polish that somebody was using and then some girl wanted to use it 
And she's like, oh, she asked, you know, she asked a girl and they're probably the same age as these girls, which is, I think, what, what made me think about it. But she asked the other girl, oh, can I use it? She's like, well, I'm using it now. And after I get done using it, she's going to use it. And then when she's done, she's going to use it. And when she's done, she's going to use it. And I was just like, what is happening here? One. And two, I will never repeat this event because I don't want to participate in this kind of behavior. But this... Yeah, I think that you guys' readings is probably um, probably like more fitting with the book. But like when I read that, I was like, yep, this is this is one of those things that girls do. <sighs> Glad I'm not this age anymore. So I'm wondering, like now that Lauren asked the question, I'm wondering what you guys thought about that scene. That was the one scene in the book for me that I honestly wasn't sure, or not the scene, but that like thought process, I, I didn't quite know how to interpret it. I didn't know if it was just like 10 year old girls, like you said, Shalanya, just kind of being like, well, no, like we don't know you, maybe, I don't know. Or if it was um, Clover kind of not really being sure genuinely because of the racial divide or I, I didn't, I didn't really know what to make of it. That was something that I, I kind of thought about and didn't come to a conclusion. Yeah, I think I, I, when I was first reading it, was thinking more in line of like what you were saying, Lauren, that the girls were just like, no, we know better than that. But now hearing Sherlania and Elizabeth, what you're saying, I can see that it could be both. I mean, even when they finally ask it, if they, when they're allowed to play, Sandra's response is, I don't care. You know, it's like, which could be a total mean girl response, or it could be like, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend this was my idea or invest more in this than I need to. Um, so it's kind of interesting that even that, like, I think we can see two different um, storylines or levels of complexity. And that's one thing, like, I, I would say about um, the choice of this book on this as part of this discussion series, I really appreciate that you picked it because I feel like I don't read a lot of picture books where I'm actually looking at each word, like why is that word there? Um, and so I really appreciated the opportunity to read something like thinking about word choice and going back and um, and so it's kind of telling that I think that we can look at it and get all these different stories out of it. So. It made me want to seek out more fictional picture books that had that offer the opportunities to ask more subtle deeper questions like this one mm -hmm. um because there are so many picture books out there and um you know many that deal with current events or with um racial issues um but i wondered like I couldn't think of any off the top of my head that I felt explored uh, race in this kind of fictional yet layered way where you could you could kind of continue to ask questions about each scene. So that was the main thing that I took away from it is just I wanted to do some some research now about other titles that might. Um, be not necessarily be the similar story, but have a similar, um, offer similar options for questioning and discussion and um, exploration. One thing that I liked about this book within that context, right, like with, you know, uh, providing this opportunity to ask a lot of questions is that um, the author made it clear that this issue had to do with this dividing fence, right? Like at the beginning, it's like, you know, there it, that was the white side of the fence. And I think that the um, one thing that this book does that not necessarily, that doesn't always happen is it you, if you want to let yourself off the hook from thinking about it, you're going to have to work hard to like create that opportunity to let yourself off the hook. And I thought I appreciated that about the book. Right. Um, I was unable to get a copy of a physical copy of um, this book the way I thought I was going to. And I was like, let me just see, you know, like 
I like, frankly, I was like, librarians put books up on the internet all the time. Let me see if I can find this somewhere. Right. And, and I did, um, I did consume this the first time through somebody reading it aloud. And then that, that was very interesting to me because they were reading it and there was a little, there was a kid in the background and it was interesting to see like the choices that somebody else made in terms of like what they thought was important or were like worth where the pauses were. And I thought that that was an interesting thing to think about too, when we're thinking about these materials. Right. Cause like, um, I think that we always are coming to works with our own point of view and we're making decisions all the way along. But like when you're looking at something this short and like you're able to watch somebody walk through the whole thing, I think that that offers, um, I think that offers something interesting as well, right? And just the way that, like in the one that I was listening to, the 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 person who was reading the book certainly, you know, had different, picked out different things than I would have. And I definitely feel like she tied a neater bow on the end of the story than like, that I did in my mind when I was reading it. Um, so I thought that that was interesting too, right? Because like, a lot of times in stories, like the author makes certain decisions about wrapping it up, but you as the um, gatekeeper to the story in some cases might make a different choice depending on like who your audience is individually or what your purpose is. And this experience made me think about that as well. That is fascinating. I'm sorry. I just have to react to that real fast and just say like that didn't even occur to me. Oh my God, that, that blows my mind. This idea of like, Duh. Yeah. Like uh, the rest of you storyteller people, you, you probably just like, yup, duh. But like, no, this really hadn't occurred to me that <laughs> storyteller, gatekeeper, adults, librarians, parents, wh whomever are going to bring their politics into this by simply just like what they choose to emphasize. I'm really curious if uh, like to hear like if, I mean, I, I just turned to the last page uh, right now, right? And like the last page, there's like two lines of dialogue between Annie and, and Clover. Annie says, someday somebody's gonna, gonna, going to come along and knock this old fence down. And then Clover says, and I nodded. Yeah, I said, someday, right? And I guess like it makes, my, my, my brain went bare when you were talking, Shalani, because it was like, oh, I wonder like how this person who you saw deliver this story how, what the intonation was like. I guess you probably, you know, if somebody said, and I nodded, yeah, you know, someday, you know, <laughs> or was it like, yeah, I nodded <laughs> solemnly. Like, you know, like, I, I just wonder about that because th those are clear, obvious, like cartoon versions of maybe how you could do it. But, but what, what a interesting idea that is that I had never really thought about. So thank you. The questions that you ask a kid, right? Like a lot of times, you know, like you're reading a book and like you, when you're, you know, uh, participating in the book with the kid, like you're asking questions like, oh, well, what do you see? You know, or, or, or maybe you're asking questions or like, you might say like, do you see that? But like, even those choices mm -hmm. about like where you step, oh, how do you think she feels right now? Or like, oh, d she looks sad right now. You know what I mean? And like mm. all of those things are, um, mm. you know, look different to all of us. Like you might look at somebody and think they look sad. I might look at them and think like, ooh, you look like you got a couple bills due and it's the 15th, you know what I mean? Like you can look at two things and see like something different just because. Yeah. And, and, and listening to somebody do that, um, was interesting because like to, to to me when I read this book you know it's like all right it's talking about this occurrence and this isn't a thing that's like over with you know what I mean like this is a thing where like literally people live on one and another side of fences and like something is true on one half of the fence and something is not true on the other half of the fence and when I and like in looking at this book I felt like it was I felt like you could either see it as like referring to something far away, or you could see it as like a reflection of, you know, things that you can see now. And all that is, it's totally dependent on what the reader is bringing to the book. Yeah. Thank you. 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry. There is one scene in the book that suggests to me that Annie's got some other playmates, like when I think about it. Um, and it's the jump rope that like when they are playing, like Annie knew what to do with that jump rope. And mm -hmm. like, you have to like, you have to have done that mm -hmm. to know what to do with it, right? And so like, Clover was like, oh, and me and such and such, we jumped in there together like we always did. And if Annie was participating in that, that meant that she had been playing jump rope with somebody because like you are not gonna like step up to the jump rope and swing it at the right pace if that's not a thing that you have done with people before. For sure. She doesn't seem like she comes across as like this weird shut in type kid. I agree. And that's a concrete example of that, that she's got some other friend somewhere, maybe white friends somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, the other thing that this book made me think about um, is just, I, I just wonder what my parents would think reading this book as people, as, as people who did grow up in overtly segregated places. Um, Cause like, I remember like what, in, like at a certain point in school learning formally about like the idea of segregation and asking my parents questions about that um and i'm just being like that's like basically being like what a weird question that's just how it was like we were not thinking about it like that like you are thinking about this in a way that we just simply were not thinking about it like you knew you knew you went you knew you did not go in the front door you knew you went to the side door that is the way that it was and and so i just i wonder how you know, what this book looks like to somebody who, um, somebody who experienced like the um, Jim Crow type segregation that we think about when we think about that word, right? Because like, again, people are experiencing segregation now and we'll never think twice about it too, right? Yeah, I mean, I think Clover's mom says that very thing, right? Like, because that's the way things have always been. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's just Clover and Annie decide that maybe they're gonna be a little different, but they're not, you know, they're, they're, they find the loophole like kids do. And they're like, no one said we couldn't sit on top of the fence. So they're not doing anything that nobody told them not to do. Um, which is actually something I really liked about this book. So I think that's very true to the way that kids at least in my experience, you know, kids will find a loophole. Um, <laughs> so I, I appreciated that. Yeah, I guess to me, like, I, I'm, I'm just like going to shelve that question of like, what do people who actually experience this life like feel about this book? I don't have a real, I don't, I just don't know how, I don't know what that would feel like. I, 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 I I can hazard some, yeah, like what you said was really interesting, Sherlanya, about that. Um, that like, it's just how it was. Um, but, but you know, what you just said, Lucy kind of speaks to how, like the hope that I guess human, humankind always seems to muster, right? For like the next generation, like, oh, it, it's really awful right now, but hopefully things will get better. You know, like I, 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 I pray, I have to, I have to believe that this will get better. And, um, it's not, I don't know, I guess the, this book ends on that note of like a promise of something of change, right? And, and at least, and, but also the actualized change of we're all sitting on the fence together right now. We didn't break any rules, but we are subverting rules, like the unspoken rules of okay, nobody told us we can never talk to someone of the opposite race. That's not how racism works. Like typically, or it can, it can work like that, but that, but there are other more subtle forms of, of, of dividing people, right. Of racism. And um, so that's something that like, you know, you asked, uh, you've raised this issue a couple of times, Sherlanya, like um, this question of like, how do we read this now? Or what do we, we don't, what am I going to as like a as an adult now in 2020 
going to talk to the next generation and when they ask this question, well, how come, you know, when like, how come there was so like rampant, like uh, inequality in just so many sectors of society? And like, how come that was the way, how come do you, you guys allowed that? Like, you know, like what's it, this book I think does invite that question. And I'm interested in taking that discussion there too. One thing I like about this book too, is that, um, it looks like Clover's got a pretty great life. You know what I mean? Like she's got her mom. Her mom is taking care of her. She lives in this nice house. She's clearly got nice clothes. She's clearly taken care of. She has like the resources that she needs in order to, um, uh, you know, thrive, right? Um, and, I, and I particularly like that because sometimes like we hear like these story, stories that paint, um, whether they're like, you know, that so I'm using story broadly, right? But like, I like that this isn't a story that's like poor Clover lived in the place where no one had enough anything. And it is the gift of this fr slice of friendship from a nearby white girl who made her whole life shine better, right? Like this is not the story that was written here. And I think that that's, um, I think that's pretty important. And I enjoy that about the story. Yeah, and that could be any story. We don't know. I mean, you know, if that's anyone's story in this book, all we get from Annie is just Annie and one glimpse of like a parent's legs, but she could not have resources and not have much, as you said before, based on where she's living. So that is something that is definitely a, a paradigm that's shift, I think, for, for the good in this book. So what are you guys going to read next? Like children's book wise or? <laughs> Just whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I am actually going to try to, um, just see what other picture books I can find that I feel, um, like I said earlier, kind of explore in a fiction of fictionally explore similar issues, but, allow for an hour long discussion. <laughs> I mean, not that I'm going to have an hour long discussion about all of them, but allow for much broader discussion. I'm just interested to see what other ones are out there. So I'm, I'm planning on doing some, some poking around just in terms of, of that, just to see what, what, what AADL has and what might be out there for purposes of, of, um, not even necessarily recommending to people, but just so I know, because I'm I'm genuinely curious about other other books that might be kind of like this in that way. Picture books, books for kids. Yeah, I'd like to see that list if you <laughs> if you make one. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let you know what I find. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think for me, like I'm not sure if I'm going to read this immediately next up, but. Um, the Color of Law by Richard Rothstein talks about redlining and this process of like actually like physically, right? So physical segregation on a, on a municipal scale um, uh, that happened across the country. So I don't know anything about it right now. Um, and I would like to know uh, much more. And so that book has sort of come across my radar once or twice as something that as a, as a good resource is a very well-researched book. Um, and I heard him on Terry Gross. So got a little yeah, I would, I would rec recommend that one. I, um, okay. I learned so much from that book about how, how deep and how far back and how, much a part of our country um the, like the redlining just is a little bit but yeah the, that book just really um educated me a lot about that kind of segregation i'm interested in reading some more of her work um she just i sh i should have looked this up before um before coming here but she just 
won another award of some kind she and two other people together did and i was like and i remember seeing it because i was like oh she wrote that book that's on this list um but she I, you know she's been writing for a while she's written a bunch of stuff and i mean i really liked this book and so i'm interested in in some of her other stuff but you know I'm about to be exploring kids' books again. So <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just add it to my like Lincoln list and, <laughs> and do it then. <laughs> did, did, did anyone read Brown Girl Dreaming here? Has I did anyone read, read that, that one. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. That's by this author too, I noticed. So yeah, that's one that won several awards or so. Or so, so. Yeah. Well, thank you guys all for...